All right, so in this video, we're gonna be setting up OBS from beginning to end. Let's get started. So to get started, of course, we're gonna install OBS. That's pretty easy. You just go to obsproject.com here. We have a little download button for Windows, Mac or Linux. We're gonna be on Windows. Click that, it'll download and you can install that manually. While we're waiting for that to download, um, have a look here. You should have Ear Trumpet installed. And if you don't, you won't see this many little uh, sliders here which is completely normal. So if you don't have Ear Trumpet, go ahead and install Ear Trumpet and make sure to open it. And that will replace your built-in volume icon with this one here that lets you adjust all these different programs without having to go into the volume mixer. Uh, what we're also gonna do really quick before we install OBS is disable any audio devices that you don't need to have enabled. So like all these monitors that have nothing connected to them. So these are basically just like HDMI ports and things that can carry audio. I have them all disabled because there's nothing connected to them. Same for the recording tab. This will just make it easier to set up OBS now because there won't be so many devices to process. So once you've done that, close out of that. We can open up the OBS installer. This is a uh, relatively straightforward. So just go ahead and install that. And once you've got OBS installed, you should see it in your start menu somewhere. It's probably gonna be at the top for you, but I'm gonna go down to O to find it. For me, it should be right here. You're gonna right click it. You're gonna go to properties. This is before you launch it for the first time. Go to properties, open file location, and do that again. Go to properties here, go to compatibility, and make sure this box is checked to run it as administrator. And this is because it will give uh, OBS priority over other games and programs so that it won't actually lag when something's trying to like use up all your graphics card or all your CPU or something. So OBS has priority, which is important. So once you've done that, you can go ahead and launch OBS. So when you launch OBS for the first time, you're going to get a little pop-up saying, do you want to allow it to make changes to your device? Go ahead and hit yes. You are going to have to do this every single time you open OBS, unfortunately. There's no way around it for the moment. So once you're in OBS, you should get a screen similar to this with the auto configuration wizard. Now, if you don't get that, you can always open it again from up here in tools. Uh, we're going to run through this now just because it will help us set up a lot of the settings on its own. Instead of going through them manually. So for me, I'm going to say optimize for streaming. So let's go next. And it's going to say base canvas resolution. This will be your monitor's resolution for the main monitor you're recording on. For me, that's this one here, which is 1080p. Uh, I'm going to prefer 60 FPS. Now, if you're not doing uh, any game streaming, let's just say you're doing uh, an in real life stream. Uh, it, it depends what you're doing, but the majority of the time, if, it, if it's just using cameras and no actual display capture, you can actually get away with 30 FPS and no one will notice. But for games, you definitely need 60. It's more important than resolution. So hit next. Uh, it's going to ask to connect your Twitch or YouTube account. Make sure you do connect account rather than the stream key because the stream key doesn't let you have your chat in OBS. Uh, the connect account does and it also gives you some extra features. So let's just do that. All right, so now that we're logged in, as you can see, uh, it's going to have these two options here to prefer hardware encoding and also estimate bitrate with bandwidth test. So this will do a test to see what the best bitrate is for you to stream at because everyone's internet connection is different and this will tell you what you're able to actually run. Let's see what kind of results we get here. So the testing is just completed and I got recommended 6,000 kilobits at 1080p 60fps. And that's actually the maximum you can do on Twitch unless you're a Twitch partner, which is pretty good. You want to try and aim for these settings if you can. If you got something lower, then have a play with it. It depends on your internet speed and also what kind of games you're going to be playing. If you ran the test on YouTube, you might have gotten a higher bitrate and that's just because YouTube allows higher bitrates on their platform. So just go ahead and hit apply settings. And as you can see, I've now got the stream information overlay and the chat overlay. So I'm just going to drag this. I'm going to put this over here on the side. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. And I'm also going to put the chat there on top of it. You could also move it around. You could have it on each side, but I like to have more space for my preview. So this will have all of your stream chat in here. So you don't actually have to have the Twitch page open while you're streaming in order to see people saying hi to you, which is really handy. So now that we've done that, we've essentially got a blank canvas to work with here. So first of all, we're going to deal with audio. So we should already have one scene set up by default, which has no sources in it. So let's go over to settings, go down to audio. Make sure your sample rate here is set to the same sample rate as your actual microphone is. So if you go into recording devices here, into your mic, advanced, and then you'll see here 48,000 hertz. That's the same as 48 kilohertz. Make sure that does, make sure that does match, of course. Uh, some microphones have different sample rates you can set them to, but just try and keep every audio device at the same sample rate. Otherwise, OBS might have issues. So we're going to add two things in here. The first one is desktop audio. So make sure you select your headset or speakers that you're using. 
for me this will be system next thing we're going to do is your mic so select your microphone in here that would be chat mic and finally if you're using a capture card to record consoles or something like an xbox or a nintendo switch then you want to go in here and also set this to your headset which would be system so i'm going to go ahead and hit apply hit ok and we should now have two devices down here to interact with. So let's start with the mic. So as you can see here, my microphone is in between the yellow and the red. It's basically when you're quiet, it'll be in the high yellow. And when you're loud, it'll be in the very, very low red, as you can see there. So that's where you want it to be at, at the end. Um, you're going to go into filters first. And if, if yours is too quiet, what you can do is you can go in here and add some gain. So if you're adding gain, always make sure you also add a limiter. So what a limiter does is it prevents the gain from going too high and causing clipping. So let me let me just show you what happens. If you just added a ton of gain here, let's say you added 30 decibels or something, you'll this will turn red as you can see, and it will start cutting out and clipping and it, it'll be all distorted and sound horrible. So you don't ever want it to do that. At, at most, you generally don't want to have more than 10 decibels of gain. And for me, I would say I wouldn't even do more than five at the most because I'm already I'm already in the yellow. Uh, so if you're adding gain, make sure you turn on the limiter over here and make sure you set this to maybe negative two at the lowest and any higher than that is fine. Any lower than that, you, you generally you're getting too close to that threshold of, of breaking people's ears. So if you're too quiet, that's how you fix it. Now, obviously, it would be better if you had a microphone that was louder. So if you have software for your microphone that you can mess around with, like mine here, I have a ton of settings I can adjust for the EQ and the, the gain and, and that individually. So if you can do that on the microphone itself and that gets you into the little yellow category, that's where you want to be. That's fine. Try and get it over there. That's better than using the built-in uh, software gain. So what about background noise then? So there's a few things you can do. What I recommend most people do is use the noise gate. So this is probably the best way to get rid of background noise. But what it does essentially is it mutes your microphone when it detects you as not talking, like when it's completely silent. Or, or when there's just like a fan or a constant noise in the background. So the problem with this is if you don't set it up correctly and your voice varies in volume a lot of the time. So let's say I was talking normally over here at this volume and I started to move away, it would start to cut out like this and you wouldn't really be able to understand what I'm saying. So you, you really have to make sure you tweak this. And the problem is it's a little hard to do that when you can't actually hear what it sounds like. So you have to do some test recordings or alternatively, if you turned on that monitor device feature earlier, you can go into here, go into advanced audio properties, turn on the monitoring, monitoring output, and then you can hear your own voice twice. But of course, the first time you do this, it's going to sound really weird and you probably won't be able to speak because there's going to be two of you talking. So yeah, mess around with that. Try and get it so that when you speak, you don't cut out, but also when you don't speak, you don't hear the background too much. Um, I do have a separate video on how to set that up properly if you want to go through that and watch that yourself. So yeah, the monitoring is good for when you're setting it up, but otherwise it's going to be a bit echoey. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Turn that off, close. That's better. So yeah, with the noise gate, just make sure you set it up right and make sure it sounds good before you actually go start your stream. Um, I do have a separate video on how to get rid of background noise from your mic entirely if you want to see more on how to set this up. But for now, I'm just going to leave this disabled. You can do that by turning that off there. I'm going to close out of this and let's do the desktop audio now. So generally a mic we want to have as the loudest thing in the stream period so desktop audio what you'll find is it'll actually be too loud uh, by default so if we play like a little test sound here like that you'll see that's about halfway because that's not very loud but stuff like music and games and all that that is much louder and that will be in the red louder than your mic the problem with that is people won't be able to understand what you're saying over the game or the song or whatever's playing so set this to about halfway and I would, I would start halfway, maybe even go further down. So work from there. Depending on what kind of games you play, best setting for you might be different. But that's pretty much it for audio. Um, let's go over to scenes now. So we're just going to call that PC games. And now we're going to add a source. So what most people do is they use display capture. And the problem with display capture is it doesn't hook into the game directly. And it, it basically, it, it captures the whole screen. Whereas game capture, it only captures the game regardless of what is on the screen. So if you have something like Chrome on top of the game, then it will still capture all of the game, none of Chrome, and it works so much better and it runs so much better as well. So display capture, you only ever want to use if you're trying to capture a window that doesn't support game capture, like let's say it's a desktop app or it's just your desktop, like the whole screen, then you would use display capture. But every other case, 
you want to try and use game capture. So let's add one here for a, a game. Let's say Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Let's do MW. So by default, this is set to capture any full screen application. Now, the problem with that is if you go into windowed mode or borderless mode, where you can use multiple monitors, um, it doesn't actually work. So what we have to set this to is specific window. Now, it's not going to pick up the game straight away because we're not actually running it yet. So of course, once you've got OBS open, you can then launch your game through something like Battle.net or Steam. And once you're in the game, I'll show you what to do next. So now that we're in a game, we can set up the options for it to be captured correctly. So go over to the video slash graphics settings for your game. Uh, you want to have a look for display mode. So set this to something called windowed full screen or full screen borderless mode. It might be called something like that. And what this mode is, is it basically lets you bring windows over and move around and like use your computer without closing out of the game. And that is really handy because you might need to go into OBS and change your scenes or go into your Twitch page, change your title or something like that. And that's, that's really helpful to be able to do that. Uh, the next thing we're going to turn off is V-Sync. So in the first episode of this series, we set up a frame rate limiter and we set up G-Sync. So if your monitor doesn't support G-Sync, then you want to have this on. But in every other case, you want to have it disabled because it adds input lag and it causes frame rate problems and OBS might have extra trouble trying to record. It, it, it feels really weird playing with V-Sync on. So yeah, you're better off limiting your frame rate to try and avoid tearing or just leaving it disabled and dealing with the occasional tearing like you can see here. It's not generally that bad, but it's something to look out for. The next thing I'm going to turn off over here is NVIDIA Highlights. So what this is, is it's a feature that records kills and stuff automatically. But as you can imagine, it interferes with OBS Game Capture because it also tries to record the game. So yeah, you, you can get away with having it enabled sometimes, but I've found that it does interfere depending on the game. So if you can, try and have it disabled. It will also give you some extra FPS while you're at it. And one more thing, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. If your game supports it, have that on enab enabled plus boost. That is the best way to have that set up. And it gives you more frames. Highly recommended. So now that we've done that, we can go back into OBS. Go back into Game Capture, specific window. Choose our game and that should be set up now. The only thing you should change in here is Capture Cursor or Capture Third Party Overlays. It's pretty self-explanatory what they do. Uh, some people might want to have this one on if they use like a Discord chat overlay or something like that for stuff like Among Us. But yeah, most of the time, these are fine to leave as is. Hit OK. And there we go, there's our game. And even though it's running behind here, you can see it's still, it still works perfectly, even if we have something on top of it. So now we've got our mic and our game set up. What we need to do next is we need to set up a webcam. So this is pretty simple. You just go over to the plus down here a video capture device just call it something like webcam and i'm going to activate mine here which is right there it's a little large but it'll work uh, you might want to change the resolution so turn this to custom you get a resolution and try and set it to the maximum if you can and that probably will look a bit better than the default uh, hit ok right there and what it will do by default is it will add another device for webcam audio we don't really want to have that on because we have, a, we have our own separate mic. So just turn that off and mute it. And there we go. There's the webcam. So if we click on the webcam scene or webcam source here, sorry, we can adjust this and we can put it basically wherever we want. We want. So if we want it over here, we can have it there or over here. That's fine. And that, that adjusts on its own as we move around. So this is what most people have set up. We have, they just have an overlay like this with their face and they have the game running behind it and that works pretty well but there's also things like overlays that people might want to have set up so what you can do as well is have things like chat and alerts come up on the screen so to set that up you just need a service like Streamlabs. if you sign up to it and go to your widget section you can add stuff like an alert box or a chat box and these are really easy to add so if you just click on the alert box you set it up how you want it to be set up and you just copy the widget url so you're back into obs at a, a browser source down here Call it your alerts and then just paste in the URL right there. Hit OK. And make sure it's on top of everything, because if you put it below, it's not gonna it's not gonna show up. But yeah, you can put it wherever you want. Let's say it's right there. And we can test it out using the little test button. So if we do test follow, you can see I just followed myself. And that's how it will look on stream. So now we've got the PC games set up. Um, of course, if you have a different game, you can just go in here and change it or add a different one. Uh, the best way to do it is to go into game capture and then 
just call it game capture and then have a hotkey one set up so you can just press a button to switch between whatever game is displayed on your screen and i use that personally but uh, some people like to just have a separate one for each game that's fine uh, what we'll do now is we'll just add another scene let's we'll call it i don't know be right back or something yeah be so you, you can switch between scenes by clicking on them and that will just use the default transition here which is a fade there's a few different ones you can have you can have a swipe if you want so you swipe preview it that's what it looks like so now you can go between them with swipes whatever you want you can even add your own there's a really good youtuber called bravity m and he makes some transitions and effects you can add to obs and he shows you how to customize them and add your own logo and everything and then he gives you free download links for templates and stuff like that really handy check him out if you want more of those but yeah let's go back to the brb scene if we add a basic text source right here let's just call it brb again and we're going to type in be right back smiley face if we do that we, we can change the font and all that if you really want to i generally just leave it alone and we're going to do that put it in the middle it's a bit boring so we might add a a background image to clean that up a little bit there we go it's a little bit better if we put that below there we can have that like that it's a bit stretched out but that's fine it looks it looks all right like that there we go so keep in mind when adding scenes that things like your alerts also have to be brought across as well otherwise you won't have them in each scene when someone donates whatever which can be a bit of a problem so make sure you also copy those across when you make a new scene so now let's change some things that are better for recording so if you go into settings go into output change to advanced over to the recording tab and add some extra audio tracks add one for each device that you want to record and then plus an extra one for your stream so I'll explain how this works more in a minute, but I recommend at least three or four to get started with. So now go over to OK, go down here to Advanced Audio Properties, and turn on all your active sources, even the ones that are inactive. So just turn that off right there. So what you can do is turn off everything for all the tracks apart from number one. So just turn all these off. So track one is the stream output. So everything on track one is going to be going to Twitch. And we just want to make sure we have everything that we uh, have set up down here just because that's what we're using. But when we're editing our video, we might want to change some things later. So we might want to have the, the game audio louder or quieter or muted. Or if we have music playing, we might not want to hear that. So what you can do is you can separate everything on different tracks. So we might want to have a separate one for alerts, separate one for desktop audio, a separate one for our mic and if we're using our webcam mic we can have that separate as well but we don't have that enabled at the moment so when you record a video you'll end up with four separate audio tracks which you can throw into a video editor and you can turn up your mic audio or your game audio and all that even after you've already recorded it so what you can also do is go into settings go into output with your streaming mode right here and you'll see track one is what we have set to go to twitch make sure that is of course track one and there's also an extra feature here called Twitch VOD Track. And that's really handy if you want to have like music on your stream, but you don't want it to be in the final VOD so you don't get DMCA'd or anything. So if you if you want to do that, you have to have, a, of course, a separate device that runs your music in order to still have your game audio and stuff. But if you can do that, then you can set this up and have music cut out of your VOD automatically every time, which is really cool. And something to keep in mind is that when we change this to advanced mode here, all of the settings from before got reset. So just make sure you change these back to what they were. In my case, this was 6,000. It was set up to 1080p and NVIDIA and Venk new. And this is probably gonna be the same for most of you guys. One more thing I would change in the settings is in advanced and then down over here, automatically remax to MP4. So when we record a file, let me just show you. We record a file here. And so the file we're recording to now is an MKV file. And the problem with that is that video editors hate it. And there's, I don't think there's any video editors that will actually open that file and, and let you edit with it. So because of that, when we stop recording, we just set it to automatically remux that file to an MP4. So if we go over to show recordings up here, we should see in our recordings folder that we have an MKV file, an MP4 file. So we can go ahead and delete this one right here. And if we open up the MP4 file, let me just show you here it is here. and let's just pause it but if you right click you can actually see you got all the, all the different audio tracks here one two three and four so you can switch between those if you want to hear the different ones and that can be just put straight into a video editor and you can do whatever you want with it 
So the reason we don't record directly to an MP4 is because if OBS crashes, it can't actually save the recording with an MP4. So it goes to the MKV first and then it converts it later. So at this point, we've got OBS set up enough to do some test recordings or maybe even our first stream. So if we hit the start stream button here, that will start our stream. And something that you can check to make sure everything's good is go over to view stats. And if you can have a look right here, you'll see that the zero dropped frames from rendering lag, zero from encoding lag, and zero dropped frames to do with network. And that's what you want. Anything below 1% is completely fine. But once it starts turning red and it gets like above 10% or something, you're going to notice that on the stream. It's going to be a bit, bit choppy. So just make sure that's all good when you, when you do your first stream. Um, if you have issues later, you can always come back in here and have a look, see if it's rendering lag or encoding lag. There's a, a few different sources online you can use to resolve those issues. So of course, there's a lot you can do with OBS. It can be heavily customized. In fact, this is what mine looks like. It's a bit, a bit complex at the moment and a bit messy, but you can do a lot and make it look really pretty and be really efficient if you want it to be like that. So in the next episode of this guide, we're going to go over how to create your first gaming video. And that will just do some basic editing and some free, free programs you can try out to get to that point and uploading and tagging and all that. But yeah, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if it helps you out. Maybe check out my Twitch or join my Discord. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good one.